Hey, Hackintosher. Today, we're tackling a crucial step in the process, USB mapping. We'll be using a fantastic tool called USB Toolbox to simplify this task on Windows. Why USB Toolbox? USB mapping ensures your Hackintosh recognizes all your USB ports correctly. Traditionally, tools like USB map were used, but USB Toolbox offers several advantages, such as technically advanced, see all ports at once, no controller renames, and no model identifier required. USB port mapping is essential for ensuring that Hackintosh systems can wake up from sleep reliably and that all connected USB devices are recognized and function correctly. By properly configuring USB port mapping, you can avoid common issues related to sleep and wake functionality and enhance the overall user experience. In case you don't have Windows anymore, you can use Ventoy and put My Windows 10 Portable Edition and do the USB port mapping from there. I will demonstrate this on my Dell Optiplex 3080 Micro with Windows 11. You will run USB Toolbox on the computer where you plan to install Mac OS, in my case, this Optiplex. Download these two files, scan the QR code to get the link. Open the Windows.exe, then this terminal window will open. Type C on your keyboard, then enter. Type C again to disable the Bind Companion option, so that you can define related port mappings independently of each other. Type C on your keyboard, then enter to disable it. Type B on your keyboard, then enter to go back. Now, type D on your keyboard, then enter to discover ports on your computer. I did some little research on this Optiplex. I searched for its USB ports. It has two USB 3 ports on the front, and another USB 2 on the rear, and two USB 3 ports. You will need a USB flash drive with USB 3 type. You can easily know it by checking the inner port has color blue plastic. USB type 2 has only black plastic on its inner port. Plug in a USB device into each port. Wait for the listing to show your USB device before unplugging it and plugging it into another port. I will plug the USB 3 type to the USB 3 type port. Once it detected, I will move it into the next USB port. I will go into the back portion of this optiplex. I will insert the USB Type 3 to this SanDisk, which has USB Type 3, then the other USB Type 2 flash drive, respectively. If you have USB-C, plug in a USB-C device twice in each applicable port by reversing the direction of the plug. Once done, type B on the keyboard, then press Enter to go back. Let's select ports and build kext by pressing S, then Enter. macOS has a built-in limit of 15 USB ports only, if you have more than 15 ports you will need to deactivate some of it. To toggle the ports off that are unused or that you do not want to use, type the port numbers separated by commas. Example, 1, 2, 4, 7. For me, I only have nine ports detected. I will leave it as it is. I'm ready to build the kext for it. Typing letter K to proceed on making the UTB map dot kext. Now it's done. Here is the kext file located on my computer. You can now close this terminal window. Here is the UTB map.kx generated. I will move this into my desktop for easy access. Now let's extract the zipped file of USB toolbox. Inside it, we will need the USB toolbox.kx. I will also move that file into my desktop as well. We will now add those two kex file into our EFI folder. You can use OCAT or proper tree. You can scan the QR code for the link. I will demonstrate how to use them up to edit your config.p list. I copied my EFI folder to the desktop. Let's move the two kext into our configuration. Put them into the kext folder of OpenCore. I will demonstrate how to add these two kext using proper tree. Locate the proper tree.bat after you extracted it. Go to File menu, then Open. Locate the config.p list. Go to File menu again, then this time select OC Snapshot or Control R on your keyboard. This pop-up window will show. This is where your EFI subfolders, click Select Folder. Let's go into the kernel portion. Click the minus button to collapse the settings. Under the kernel, go into Quirks, then scroll down for a little bit. Locate the XHCI port limit. The value should be set to False. Just double-click the value to interchange from True or False. Once done, go to File menu, then Save. You can now close Proper Tree. 
Now let's try editing the config.p list using OCAT. Open OCAT.exe if you're on Windows. You can drag the config.p list into OCAT, then go to kernel section. The two kext are automatically added because we copied them a while ago into the kext folder. Go to quirks. Then verify the XHCI port limit if it's unchecked or disabled. Once done, click the Save button above. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more, check out some of the related videos on the screen.